Very often people say the Yes class is the best car in the world. And because of that, Mercedes wants to achieve the same thing for the new EQS because that is nothing different than an S-Class but fully electric. If this car can meet these figures, what it delivers regarding to drive, charging, range and many other things, we're going to find out now. The first thing you recognize in the car is silence. The only thing I do here is a bit of the air condition and that's it. Really quiet. The materials and the craftsmanship inside of these EQS are as expected. So you do find um, nice leather, you do find wood, metal, glossy black and everything is perfectly made. And with that, yes, of course, the interior is absolutely as expected from an S-Class. The EQS is 1 meter 93 in width and with that quite an impressive car from the front. And when you look at the front you instantly see this is part of the EQ family because you do find this black panel grille here with all these star patterns which is special for the EQ cars. And then if you go a bit more further down you see this massive air intake at the center and two yeah let's say fake air intakes at the side and these two they really put the weight to the outer line of the car and make the car even more wide than it is. And then of course the EQS features always LED technology for the headlamps but our car is featuring the so-called digital light and that not only illuminates the street in front of you perfectly it also gives you extra information and warnings on the road directly in front of your car. The hyperscreen display I do have here in my EQS is absolutely massive. It's more than 1 meter 40 wide with its three displays. But nevertheless, the right one is nothing I should take care about. But only if you look at the center display, this is so big and on top of it, this is so nicely made um, and you find loads and loads of inflammations perfectly presented. And this features the so-called one layer technology, which means you don't, don't have to dig deep into many menus and submenus to find what you want because everything you use a bit more regular you will find on the top layer and you can instantly use this without going any routes around something else which just takes you time. Now we're driving on the motorway with about 120 kilometers per hour and as you can hear it is so quiet in the car and it's so comfortable and the car is so solid on the road. It's an absolute pleasure and completely relaxed drive. And because of the range, you don't have to stop so often because I think you can sit in the car for a long, long time. The EQS is quite a big car, but it has the matching boot compartment. So that one here features 610 liters with the rear seats up. If you fold that bench down completely, that increases up to 1,770 liters. In the underfloor, you do find a compartment which is quite spacious. And in that you, do, you can easily store all your um, cables for charging. And if you close that one, you've got a clear flat floor and that makes it easy to get your stuff in and out. Of course, the EQS is featuring the most important driver assist and safety systems as standard. So you do always find, for instance, a lane assist or the, I think, very important um, assistance systems regarding to emergency braking. But of course, you can have a lot more. If you want, you can buy packages or you can tick the boxes to um, pick bit by bit. Um, but on top of this, this car features then the partly autonomous driving, which works absolutely perfectly, but it will do even more because as soon as the regulations are made, the um, EQS can drive completely autonomously on motorways if you have a bit more of traffic, up to a speed of 60 kilometers per hour completely autonomously. And this is, I think, one step forward into the idea of let the car do the business on the motorway without you thinking about the standard drive. The good thing with all these tunnels in Switzerland is I can get an idea of how it is to drive the car in the night while driving it and the day. And the illumination inside of the car is absolutely massive and nice. I do have these three big screens. I have these light stripes around inside of the car. Even the sides of my seats, they do feature this ambient light. And this is a bit like sitting in a spaceship. You can order 19 to 22 inch wheels for the EQS. But as our car shows perfectly, 21 are more than enough. Overall, the EQS is 5 meters 22 in length and features a wheelbase of 3 meters 21. 
but it is only 1 meter 51 high. And this, together with a so-called one-bow design, provides it with an absolute unique look. To reduce the drag coefficient, you do find flash door handles, and if you want, the doors do open and close automatically. The new big head-up display that you can buy for the EQS is really fabulous. This is something I definitely would buy because that provides you with all the information you need and a lot more, like driver assistance, safety systems, speed limits, uh, your route, and all this stuff. So very interesting and very nicely made. And it is really massive because the screen size is something like a 77 inch screen. So easy to look at. Even if you normally need glasses, you don't need them here. That works perfectly with that. Controlling the EQS works on one hand with a new Mercedes steering wheel, which means on the left hand side you have the touch panels to control the cockpit information. On the right hand side you have everything to control the center console. On top of this you do have this massive center screen and that works really, really nice. And because of this single layer technology you don't have to use and recognize or learn so many different sub-menus. You can just use it and whenever you use something a bit more often it is on the top layer and that makes it very easy to work with it and on top of this because of its size um, this is something where you always find everything instantly a very important part of the main menu here is the area eq because with that you can on one hand set the charging options so you for instance can define the limit for charging um, and you will find a lot of information regarding to your range and to the consumption of the car. So you can really dig deep into the drive data to learn a bit more about the electric drive of your vehicle. There will be two different powertrains available for the EQS when the car hits the market. The first one is the car we're driving, which is the EQS 450 Plus, and that is rear wheel powered and it offers a maximum output of 245 kilowatts. And then there is the bigger version, which is called EQS 580 Formatic. And you can hear it, it's an all wheel drive version. This means we're talking about an extra motor on the front axle and then the system output here is 385 kilowatts as a maximum. When we talk about power we also have to talk about range and then we need to talk about battery as well. And there will be two batteries available. One is the bigger one, the one we have on board and that features a 107.8 kilowatt hours capacity and that is enough with our powertrain to reach a maximum range of up to 780 kilometers with a fully charged battery. Later there will be a 90 kilowatt hour battery available and that then will deliver about 100 kilometer less. The base equipment of the EQS is very nice and of course that car always features everything you need. But it is a Mercedes and it is an S-Class and with that you of course have the opportunity to configure loads and loads of extras into your car to make the EQS your EQS. The suspension, steering and braking of the EQS matches the car perfectly, which means you do have a suspension which is very comfortably but not, I would say, wobbly. It's still stiff enough to provide you with a very good feeling, with the feeling of having the car under perfect control. On top, you have a precise but not nervous steering and a brake system that works perfectly. And you do not recognize if the car is braking mechanically or if it's just um, recuperating energy. And so overall, this package provides you with what you expect from this car, which is an absolute enjoyable and relaxed drive. There will be two different batteries available for the EQS. One is the 107.8 kilowatt hour battery and the smaller one is 90 kilowatt hours. And when we talk about batteries we have to talk about charging and that car delivers a standard 11 kilowatt if you want to have AC charging and you can have 22 but you have to pay extra. But if you want you can use a quick charger and with that you will find 200 kilowatts charging power and that means you do have 300 extra kilometers in only 15 minutes or from 10 to 80 percent in only 31. Of course the EQS features different drive modes and so you can choose between Echo, Comfort, Sport and Individual. Echo for sure is the one where the car uses the smallest amount of energy. If you use comfort that is your mode for day-to-day -day driving and works perfectly with sports the whole car gets more crisp um, the gas is more sensitive and it really is a, a lot more sporty than 
and with individual you can adjust the car the way you prefer it for yourself. But I have to say, I drove the car now for a while and I normally always use this comfort because this really is the mode which fits the car absolutely perfectly. My test car should take an average um, up to 20.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven and that's a number I haven't seen today. Um, we used about something around 15. Um, one reason for that is we started on a quite high point so we drove more a bit downhill um, and I think after 50 kilometers um, we started to drive on an equal level but to the end of the day we're going to be somewhere higher up and so I'm very interested to see how this um, consumption will change up to the end of our test drive today. Um, another very interesting thing with the car is it should provide you with up to 780 kilometers of maximum range with a fully charged battery. And we started today, um, the battery was a bit less than 90% charged and I remember that the car presented me a range of more than 500 kilometers when we started. And now we drove about 75 kilometers today and still it is a lot more than 500 kilometers left in the battery regarding to the range. And this is something which really changes your mind regarding to electric vehicles because you do not have to think all the time about what do I have left, how far can I drive, because this really behaves a bit like a standard combustion car. At the rear of the EQS you can very nicely see this typical coupe shape with this long boot lid and these big wheel arches here. And the design is very similar to the front and the rear, so no lines, very clear, very easy. And in contrast to that, you find this sharp spoiler up here. The car always comes with LED technology for the taillights, and when you look into them, you find something that looks a bit like a 3D helix. Very interesting and typical EQ. These taillights are connected with the light bar here to give the car a very nice and unique look from the rear. To underline the sportiness of the car, you do find the diffuser and right here you find something that really reminds me of some exhaust pipes. The powertrain of my test car provides you with 245 kilowatts of maximum output and 568 newton meters of maximum torque, both going to the rear axle. But this is nothing that makes you drive the car quick uh, and sporty. This is more something which provides you with a very relaxed ride because there is always the power you want if you push the pedal but this is nothing you do because the car is so solid on the road, it's so quiet and so comfortly so you, even if you drive in comfort mode you still have more than enough power that you can feel but this is not the power you want. What you want with that car is an absolute easy drive and this is what the EQS delivers perfectly. Even though the car is featuring a standard a rear axle steering, um, the base version is 4.5 degrees but you can have if you want to pay extra up to 10 which makes the turning circle very very little for such a big car but even though having that on board this is still a car to cruise and not a car to drive sporty with. The space the car offers here at the front seats is absolutely fine. Even me, I'm nearly two meters tall, I sit perfectly in the car. And you can adjust the seat and the steering and everything the way you want to really have a comfortable drive. And we talk about the seat, this seat is massively comfortable and it provides you with all the support you want. On top of this, you get in my car um, heated seats, ventilated seats, you do have massage programs, so everything you want to have a relaxed and enjoyable drive is absolutely delivered by this seat. How about the space behind me? We're going to find out now while having a short stop. So this is the short promised stop to see if I can sit behind me. I didn't change my seating position and now we're going to look if I can sit behind me. That looks promising. So let's check it out. As you can see, entering is easy and I have massive room in front of my knees, but unfortunately the headroom doesn't work. So this is because of the shape of the car. It's a bit of a pity because I would love to have a bit more space, but to be honest, I'm nearly two meters tall. I'm quite heavy, so this is not a typical thing. If you're a bit shorter, that would be massively comfortable. Always on board is the latest version of MBUX, and with that, intelligent calculating of routes. 
And this is quite important for an electric vehicle. And this system not only provides me with the quickest route, it also provides me with the perfect charging points. And with that, it also gives me the time that I need to my target location, including the charging time. And this means on one hand, I do definitely know when I will arrive and I will know up front when I will stop for how long. And this makes it a lot easier to calculate your route and to calculate your stops and just enjoy them or use them, whatever you prefer. So now I did a bit more than 100 kilometers in the EQS only today. And as you can see, my car is using an average 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. So a lot less than it should take. Um, but yesterday we drove most of the time up hill while we today drove downhill and that really makes a difference because yesterday at the end of the day I had at the top of the hill 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven and when we went a short bit down the hill to the hotel it was only 22 left and if you put that into account you can really see that that car definitely can achieve this uh, bit more than 20 kilowatt hours in average per 100 kilometer driven easily or less and with that in mind you can absolutely see that this car will deliver the maximum range that Mercedes is promising and with this on board you will not need to think about where to charge when all the time if you want to drive a long distance and on top of this even this the car would do automatically thanks to MUX. There is no chance to open the bonnet of the EQS and for that there are three good reasons. The first thing is the design of the car because all these gaps here they're very very precise and that is only possible because we're not allowed to push down this front lid. The next one is there is a so-called HEPA filter in the car which captures more than 99% of all the particles and this is sealed under the hood. And the third one is there is no front trunk coming with the EQS, so there's no reason to open the bonnet. And if you now say, how could I refill my wiper water? Easy that. You just open that one here and there is the refill. Talking about compartments, the EQS provides you with one surprise at the front because we do find standard compartments in the door. Then you do find here in the center console at the top, uh, at the front, um, a small part where you can um, charge your mobile devices um, if you want with a USB-C socket or wireless. Behind that you do find two cup holders and a small compartment inside of it and then there is the standard Mercedes armrest which is splitted and underneath there is a standard compartment. But because we are driving an electric mobile we do not have the middle tunnel and that means we do have plenty of space down here under the center console and that is massive so you can easily put an iPad there. If you go to the rear you do find uh, charging points at the center console and of course standard compartments in the doors left and right. On top of this in the armrests you do not only find two hidden cup holders you will also find extra compartments and the opportunity to charge mobile devices wirelessly. If you push the pedal to the metal that car really gets really quick and on top of this with the rear axle steering the car is so easy to handle it really does not feel like such a big kind of a car. That was my test drive in the new Mercedes EQS and to make a long story short that's for me definitely the best battery electric vehicle in the world at the moment because that car delivers everything you expect from a Mercedes S-Class but not with a combustion but with an electric engine and when you look at the consumption and the range of the car you don't have to think about when and where to charge the next time.